All right, it's 11 o'clock. Let's go ahead and get started with our class. Uh, so welcome to Biology 100, Section 12. Uh, this is my first time teaching online, and this is my first time using Canvas. Um, just to give a little introduction. So since it is my first time, it's kind of weird uh, teaching online here with everyone's cameras off. So let's just make it a little bit more personable and turn our cameras on, at least for the first day, so I can put some faces to the names uh, for the rest of the semester. I won't care, but just for today, let's do that. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right, so today should be quick, pretty quick and short. I should be only lecturing for about 20 minutes or so. Um, so let's get into it. Screen share. All right, can everyone see my screen? Biology 100 Laboratory, perfect, thanks. So, a little quick introduction about myself. Um, I'm originally from the Bay Area. I did my undergrad at the University of Hawaii, where I spent nice four nice years there. Um, came to San Diego about five years ago, uh, and I've been in school for four, so I'm, a, I'm currently a master's student in the biology program, and I study the ocean. I consider myself a marine biologist. Um, since this is online, I don't really have any set office hours, obviously, um, but feel free to email me all the time. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I wanna set up a meeting time, I'm happy to do that over Zoom. And this is my email address down here. Um, my Canvas account, there's a bit of an issue accessing it. Um, so my Canvas account will have a different email uh, than what's reflected here. So please use this email that's shown right here. Um, Sorry for my long last name, but that's just how it is. So make sure it's write that down. And I will post these lectures uh, on Canvas. I'll post those and as well as post the recording um, on YouTube. Haven't found the best way to record onto Canvas yet. So I've made my own YouTube channel where you can find all these recordings to help you go through in case you missed a class or want to do it on your own time. So let's get into what the course is. Um, since this is an online course, most of the coursework is gonna fall onto you outside of the designated two hours and, and 40 minutes of this class. So you'll have several projects that you're gonna be doing, uh, either through iNaturalist, which is an app that you can download onto your phone, go out and explore your backyard, uh, take a photo of a critter, a plant, an animal, fungi, whatever it is. And iNaturalist has a huge database of, of what that animal could possibly be, like a species ID. That's one project you'll be doing. You'll be doing some um, sourdough starting. Um, sourdough got really big in the quarantine here, so you guys are gonna learn about sourdough and yeast and all those cool functions. Uh, and then you'll also be creating your own little ecosystem, your self-sustaining ecosystem that just sits right on your windowsill. Um, and then you'll be sort of manipulating that around the semester and kind of testing different hypotheses. So. Um, there's not too many set deadlines for the course. Um, there's a few sprinkled throughout the semester just to keep you guys on track. But again, most of the work is gonna fall onto you guys outside of this class period. Uh, so make sure you're staying on, make sure you're motivated and, and staying on those deadlines that you've set for yourself. Um, all right. So the syllabus I have posted on Canvas. Has anyone got a chance to look at that yet uh, and access it? Hopefully everyone can. Awesome, and then I also posted the uh, schedule as well. Um, the schedule may be subject to change through our lab coordinator if he feels the need to, um, so just be a heads up. Please try to read through the syllabus. It's kind of long before next class. Uh, if you read it before this class, perfect, um, but next class definitely just to familiar, familiarize yourself with it and what this course is all about. Um, like I said, the lab is pretty much project-based, so you'll be doing a few projects outside, um, and you will need to get a lab manual for that. So the lab manual link should be posted in the syllabus as well. Uh, this is what it looks like, the general biology um, latest edition. Uh, please get that as soon as possible. I know shipping times can probably vary, especially right now. Everything's getting shipped to your home. So please get that as soon as possible. There are different versions out there, um, older versions that you may be able to save money on, but this updated version will save you money in the long run because it gives you a code 
to buy certain materials that you'll need for the allergy project. So please get the most updated version. Uh, I think it's like $26 or something like that. Um, you will have four uh, exams this semester, uh, but your lowest exam score will be dropped. So you'll only be graded on, on three of those. Uh, and very importantly, you must be checking your SDSU email. This is our only form of communication. Uh, so please have the correct email linked to your Canvas. Anytime I post an announcement on Canvas, it should go directly to your email. Um, so please be checking that regularly and consistently. Uh, a little bit of note on the syllabus about plagiarism or cheating, just, just don't do it. Uh, it might be tempting with everything being online now, but please just don't cheat, save ourselves a headache. We don't wanna go down that road. Um, so just, just don't do it. Course objective is to demonstrate biology's relevance in everyday issues. Uh, this is especially pressing right now since we have the COVID situation going on and, and really show that uh, biology is all around us, no matter where we are, um, no matter what time it is, biology is, is consistently around us. And so this course will hopefully help bring those um, situations to light about biology and then facilitate hands-on participation in science. Uh, since this class is online, it's a really cool and unique opportunity to actually get your hands on in science and do your own things. If this was an uh, in, in class course, uh, it would be mostly me lecturing and then you guys doing a few puzzles or whatnot. Um, but it's a really cool and unique opportunity that you guys have to do actually do science yourself um, at home. So let's take advantage of that this semester. Um, so some of the science, some of the projects will involve a, a citizen science project. And I'm just going to briefly go over what that is. It's pretty much when scientists rely on public participation to help gather and analyze data on a large scale. Um, scientists only have so many resources at their hands and they only have so much time. They can't be everywhere at once. So if they're doing a huge experiment over a spatial gradient or a, or a time scale, yes, question. Yes, please feel free to chat in or just announce. Um, this is just the link. So I don't know what that is, but uh, I do speak fast sometimes, so please just call me out on it. Uh, throw it in the chat if you want to. Uh, if you want to do that, or just you know, speak up and tell me to slow down. I won't get offended. Um, I don't really know what this is. This group me, but that's chat's available. Okay, cool. Um, so citizen science um, using on public to get a large amount of data uh, that could be easily analyzed by scientists. An iNaturalist is one of those, um, you know, citizen science projects where citizens are going out identifying species that helps uh, scientists collect data on species distributions, uh, what's around. And then also in this class, we do problem and project-based learning. So like I said, you'll be doing these at-home projects and you'll be manipulating little things about the project uh, to help inform your hypothesis and kind of learning as you go and learning from your mistakes or learning from your results. All right, so that's all I have about sort of the introduction to the class, the syllabus, the schedule. Um, any questions on that so far? Anyone got any questions on that? Um, I have a question. Yeah, what's up? Is there is there going to be like, I know in chemistry there was like online labs. Are we not doing that for biology? Or? Um, so far, there won't be any that are online. Um, there are a few videos you need to watch. There's links you need to go to, uh, but there's no like online assignments, if that makes sense. So like for the Ecosphere assignment, there's YouTube links you can watch and stuff like that. Uh, but that assignment is not online. Um, does, that, does that make sense? Cool. Um, the iNaturalist one is mostly online. You can do it through your phone or, or iPad, or whatever you've got. Um, you can also access your online, your iNaturalist account uh, on the computer. So you'll link those two up um, and that's the best way to, to do that. But iNaturalist is mostly just you going out there taking photos with your phone. Yeah, good question. Anything else? Anything? Um, I got a question. Yeah, what's up? Um, so like, uh, so if there's like some quite like a labs that's not online, does that mean like, so you said like there's gonna, we're going to do labs that's going to be inside our house? Like, is that right? Yep. Yep. So, so yeah. yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, like, so how do we get the like resources? Like, do we have to buy them ourselves or like, like what's going to happen? Yeah. Most of the materials you should already have at home, uh, but they will have to be bought um, either through the, the link that's at the first page of the lab manual. You have a, a promo code to get the algae research supply. So you'll be ordering those supplies online. 
And then for the ecosphere, you'll need like jars and stuff like that and something you could like seal. So hopefully you have some of those. If not, they will need to be bought or, or borrowed from someone. Mm -hmm. uh, and then part of the ecosphere project is you going outside collecting dirt and plants and aquatic animals to throw in to your ecosphere. So you will need to be going outside and collecting stuff from ponds and, and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the lab manual lays it out pretty nicely. So hopefully you guys have got your hands on that. Uh, if not soon, um, I'm not going to go through it, you know, piece by piece today. It lays it out pretty nicely. So go ahead and read through that. And that should tell you all you, you need to know about what, what should be bought and what should be expected for, for the semester. Yeah. Good question. Anything else? Any other questions? All right. Let's get into biology and the scientific method. So this is gonna be starting on page six, I believe if you have the lab manual, if not, no worries, page five. Um, that's kind of where I'm jumping off from. All right, so biology is the study of life. Uh, any living organism, plants, animals, microorganisms, um, little bacteria, viruses, all the way to elephants, the largest giraffes on there, uh, trees, um, plants, aquatic plants, deep sea animals, anything like that uh, is the study involved in biology. So of course this natural world is incredibly complex. So we need to really figure out how do we standardize this to really study it. Uh, we can't just have people going off on their own, doing all these different experiments, we got to find a way to standardize it because it is so incredibly complex. And we do this through the scientific method. So first step is to observe. You're going to go out, you're going to observe patterns in nature. You're going to ask questions about them. Why is this flower pink compared to this flower is, is green or yellow? Um, why do bees have this striped pattern? on their abdomen, um, why do spiders have eight legs? These are all patterns that you can observe. It could be the simplest patterns just dedicated to one species. It could be an extremely large pattern uh, dedicated to whole ecosystems. Why are trees laid out the way they are? Why don't we see trees above a certain elevation? Um, why is there more diversity at the equator compared to the poles like the Arctic and the Antarctic? Um, so any sort of pattern that you observe in nature, no matter how big or how small is the first step of the scientific method. After you find your pattern and, and your question, something that you're really curious about, you wanna hypothesize it. So you wanna make an educated guess or explanation to try and answer one of your questions, try to explain one of your patterns. Um, the key to the hypothesis is that it must be testable. So if you, um, if you go out and you see, you know, why are there trees dispersed in this area and not the other area? And you think your hypothesis is that aliens put them there that's not really a testable hypothesis. We can't really go out and, and test for aliens, right? That's not something that's feasible. Um, so that would be a really poor hypothesis. Um, a, a good hypothesis about why a tree is here and not there, or why is it dispersed in a certain area, you know, maybe it has to do with light or rain um, or the soil composition, you know, or there's herbivores eating it. These are all things that can be tested um, and make for a good experiment and try to help explain your observation. So of course, after you've got your testable hypothesis, what you wanna do is you wanna test it. So you can test it a few different ways. You can test it using an observational experiment where you go out and you collect a bunch of data uh, and you find, kind of find a correlation um, between the data and what you've observed. So if your tree is in a certain area, you notice that the area gets a lot, a lot of rainfall. You're collecting data on how much rain, how often is it raining? Uh, and you're kind of using that to extrapolate, well, maybe it's due to um, the rain in this area. That's why the tree is growing here and not in a certain other place. Or you can go out and do a manipulative experiment. This is where you're actually manipulating your hypothesis to really get at the variable that's contributing to the pattern. So if you think it's rainfall, Maybe there's some way where you block the rain from this tree that it doesn't get enough rain. So a manipulative experiment really gets at the key core to your hypothesis and to your pattern. You're really manipulating the variables to test for what you're seeing. Whereas an observational experiment, you're just kind of using uh, a correlation pretty much to try to explain um, and why you see this pattern. Does that make sense? Any questions about this? Cool. And then finally, the last part is to interpret and analyze your data. 
Um, this could be as simple as looking at a graph between the two. This could be done using, you know, really advanced statistical methods. Um, however, what you do, you want to analyze your data. And then probably the most important thing about science is really telling the world about your data, um, telling the world about your cool results. Um, you know, as scientists, we often get stuck in our little bubble. Uh, we're just publishing it into scientific communities. Um, but really what we want to do is we want to strive to reach the broader audience, um, whether that be the community, the local community, you know, or, or, or beyond. So uh, we really want to make sure that we're publishing our results um, and that way everyone can, can get access to them. Um, oftentimes, maybe more so than not, you'll get non-results, uh, which is equally as important in the scientific world than a cool result. Um, you know, I always think back to the Edison example where he, you know, he always said he didn't find, or he found one way to make a light bulb, but he found 2000 ways not to do it. So uh, that is also just as important as getting uh, a cool result. So when you guys manipulate these experiments, um, maybe you'll get a cool result, you know, maybe you won't, but it's just either way, you're gonna learn from it, which is probably one of the most important parts of biology is, is learning from your results um, and then continuing to build on those. So you've got a solid foundation, a solid picture of the pattern you observed. Um, so there's many different facets to it. And now I'm gonna go through an example of this, you know, um, scientific method here. So we observe that uh, when we're outside, our skin becomes really red, we get sunburned. That is a pattern that we observed in nature. So we hypothesize that since we're outside, something from the sun makes our skin burn. We don't know what, but we think that it's something from the sun. So we go through and test this. How do we do that? Is we find four similar sunny days, spend one of them inside, spend one outside for two hours, spend one outside for six hours, and one outside all day. The reason we wanna find four similar sunny days is because we wanna eliminate any confounding variables that may uh, inhibit this test. So if we find four days, um, but one of them is rainy, one of them is cloudy, uh, one of them there's a lot of smoke in the air or something. We can't really get at the real fact about why our skin is burning because we've got so many of these variables um, that are inhibiting this test. It could be cloud cover, it could be smoke in the air, it could be the rain. So we really want to find four similar sunny days to eliminate any confounding variables. And then your book also goes in or your lab manual also goes into these different things like positive and negative controls. The negative control is a control that you expect to find the least result or a non-result. So since we think that the sun makes our skin burn, if we're inside, we're not getting any of those sun rays, that is a negative control. On the opposite of that is a positive control where we think we'll get the maximum result. Our positive control is we're spending all day outside, 12 hours of sun, we're going to get the maximum sunburn or to the point where it's pretty much purple at this point you know so um we all know how strong the sun can be here in san diego on the beach days um so 12 hours will definitely make our skin burn as long as we're not getting any uh sunscreen on us that would be another confounding variable because it's blocking those uva and uvb rays so then what we're testing uh, we got two different variables. We got an independent variable and a dependent variable. The independent variable is what we're changing, the characteristic being tested, which is the sun level. We're changing the sun level based on our experiment. We've got inside zero sun, outside two hours minimal sun, outside six hours a medium amount of sun, and then outside all day a ton of sun. So that's the independent variable, the sun level. The dependent variable is the outcome measured. It's the redness of our skin. This can be measured uh, qualitatively just by looking at it, or maybe a little bit pink if we're outside for two hours, really red if we're outside for six, and almost purple if we're outside all day. Or it can be measured um, quantitatively if we've got some sort of number designation, maybe one through 10, 10 being the highest, super red, one being super low, uh, and almost pink, you would again put that on a scale uh, and measure that with numbers. That would be a qualitative, a uh, quantitative measurement of of the redness of the skin. Any questions on the variables, positive, negative controls, independent, dependent variable, anything like that?
All right. And then lastly, we interpret our results. So we see that the skin didn't change when inside, um, but became redder when we were outside. So there's something about this, the, the sun that makes our skin dark and makes our skin red. Um, so it's just a very simple experiment. Maybe we want to build on this. Maybe we want to conduct an experiment later on that uh, eliminates some of the UVA rays, but keeps the UVB rays, and then so on and so forth. So we can always build on this. Um, so if you got these cool results, you want to interpret them, and you want to share them to the world. Let us everyone know that something from the sun makes your skin burn. We don't know what it is yet, but we know it's there. All right. So that's really all I have for you for this first uh, class today. Pretty short and sweet, uh, which is nice, let you guys go. But um, definitely before next class, you wanna do a few things. You wanna make sure you set up your iNaturalist account. You can download the app on your phone, on your iPad. You can register for it online. And then you wanna take five observations from your backyard. Um, whether you see a spider, take a photo of it. Uh, you see a tree or a flower, take a photo of it, upload it to iNaturalist and kind of identify what that is, whether it's a black widow spider or a poppy flower or a daisy, whatever that is, upload it to iNaturalist. You want five observations of the natural world. Once you got those five, send it over to me in an email and I can record your participation for that. So set up your iNaturalist account, familiarize yourself with it, and then send me five observations before next week. You also want to familiarize yourself with the Sourdough for Science, the starter. So I've posted these links here. Um, just go ahead and go through it. Nothing due for this quite yet, um, but just familiarize yourself with it. Oh, we got a question. We got a chat. These are just emails to you, not Canvas. Yes, these are just emails to me. Uh, good clarification. So Canvas, I've heard is really bad about uh, if you email me through Canvas, it won't show me who it is or, or give me a reply email. So please email these to me personally uh, at mlibrigazelle at, at, at sdsu.edu. So my personal email that I posted beforehand and then I'll post again at the end of this lecture. Uh, please send those to me personally, not through Canvas. Thanks for clearing that up, good question. And then Zooniverse is another uh, thing you should familiarize yourself with. Uh, this is another class project that you'll be doing. Just go ahead and go through it, uh, familiarize yourself with it. Um, and then Ecosphere Project, we've got a ton of links in the lab manual that I'll, I'll post as well. Um, please go through and familiarize yourself with what is an Ecosphere. There are some great videos on and tutorials on how people did it and did it successfully. Um, so go ahead and, and watch some of those videos and familiarize yourself with it. And then send me a selfie of your ecosphere setup by next week as well. Um, so screenshot of the iNaturalist with five observations and then a selfie of your ecosphere. Um, I'm going to get a ton of emails from you guys. So um, I'll be getting some from this class as well as my other class, 28 students in each class. That's a ton of emails. Um, so when you do email me, Please, in the subject line, use your first name, last name, file 100, and then whatever assignment it is. So as an example, if I was sending myself a selfie, I do Max Lieberzell, file 100, Ecosphere selfie in the subject line. That way I know right away what it is. I can put you, I can get your name on there. I know the assignment and you guys can uh, and send it to me that way. So please do that. Uh, in addition, what I didn't post on here, is I need uh, a selfie from everyone with an identification card. So like a red ID, driver's license, uh, just so I know who you are. And uh, one of your friends is not taking this class for you. Uh, if you are one of those people, I'm stoked you like biology that much that you wanna take it uh, for one of your friends. But so please send me an ID card uh, with your name on it so that way I can read it same sort of format in the subject line. When sending me your ID card, don't show me your red ID number, don't show me your address, don't show me any other variables that can identify who you are, you know, X those out. Uh, I don't care about those things. I just want your name and a uh, picture of you. That way I can, can match you up and make sure you're taking this class. You say who you are pretty much. Um, so please send me that by next week as well. Um,
One more chat. All right, what do we got here? So type the ID or take a photo. Take a photo of it. So just hold it up like this, selfie, cross out any, you know, addresses, height, weight, hair color, whatever that is, uh, red ID, and then send that over to me. That way I, I can um, um, put a face to your name. Where can we find the lab manual? The lab manual will be found uh, online. You can purchase it through Blue Door Publishing. And after this, I will post the link to the lab manual. Um, I should have posted already in the announcement. So if you go on Canvas and see the announcements, there should be a link to the Blue Door Publishing where you can buy the lab manual. Uh, did everyone see that link? Is that on for everyone? Okay, I'm getting some thumbs up. So uh, the publishing link is on there. So please look at that announcement and that's where you can find the lab manual. Uh, I think it's around $26. So I have to front that. Um, so since everything is online, we don't really have that, um, you know, face-to-face -face contact. It might be a little bit more difficult to interpret some of the things um, that I'm saying or follow along. Please, please, please don't hesitate to ask, guys. Um, you can cut me off mid-lecture. I don't care. Uh, type it in the chat just like you guys have been doing. But I want you guys to succeed. Um, please don't, don't hesitate to speak up. Another question, uh, do you want the three assignments all attached in the same email or separate? Totally up to you. Um, if you wanna do them separate, that's fine. Just make sure you're labeling it in the subject line. If you wanna do them all the same, uh, just be like subject line, you know, first name, last name, about 100, uh, first week's assignments. How do you want us to address you? Uh, you can just address me as Max. That's my name. Yeah, just address me as Max. Uh, I have taught before at, at uh, STCU and I've had people address me in a few other ways, but I think just Max is the most common, um, probably the best way. Um, yeah, anything else? How long does it take for the manuals to be shipped when we buy it? Um, that's a good question. It really depends on where you are. So if you're in San Diego, it shouldn't be too long, maybe a few days or so. If you're in Massachusetts, probably a little longer. Um, so make sure you get that in um, as, as soon as possible, depending on your location. Um, another thing to note, um, everything here will be scheduled based on San Diego time, California time, Pacific Center time. Uh, assignments will be due based on you know the time that we have here in San Diego. So if you are further away or not in San Diego, a different state, please uh, make sure you're aware of that timing. Um, unfortunately, we can't accommodate people that are, are, are out of state. So we're gonna accommodate for uh, everything as far as it relates to San Diego. Um, so please keep in mind, keep that in mind. Uh, will there be group projects? No, no group projects. Um, you know, hopefully you're not bunkered up with people from your class. Maybe you are, maybe your roommates or so, but uh, for the most part, I think everyone should be on their own. So no group projects. Um, there will be, you know, you will have to go outside and go explore parks, um, get yourself some water from, from Lake Murray or from some of the, uh, the pond at SDSU. So if you do want to go with someone, totally fine. Uh, that's on your own time. Just make sure you're being safe, wearing your mask, keeping your distance. Um, so you can do stuff together, but all the projects will be um, on your own. Is there any way we can purchase the lab manual in person? I don't believe so. No, I don't think so. I think you have to get it online. Um, I haven't been to SDSU uh, since spring 2021, so I'm not sure what the bookstore is, if it's open or not, but I don't think you can get it in person. I think it's strictly online. Um, was there another question? Oh, that's a little up arrow. Okay. Um, so like I said, this is, you know, my first time teaching this virtually. Um, I'm sure maybe you guys have had some classes virtually uh, last semester. If you want me to slow down, if there's something that's just not working for you, please just let me know. I'm happy to fix that uh, to accommodate you guys. Um, and if you want to meet outside of class, we can definitely do that over Zoom and uh, do a little office hour. Um, and then as far as Zoom meeting goes, uh, this will be a reoccurring Zoom link. So it should work every Thursday at 11. 
uh, I'll see you here online. Um, and yeah, that's all about that I have. So most of the classes are going to go this way. Most of the class will be me lecturing for, what is it now, like 30 minutes. Um, and then once that's done, I'll stay on for questions if anyone has some. If not, everyone's free to go, do their own thing. Uh, once the last person has left, I will leave too. So if you're late to class and, you know, this class goes from 11 to 140, if you get on class at 1230 and, and I'm not there, it's because everyone's already left. So, um, but I will stay on for uh, until the last person's left. So the class, uh, so the class, like th that depends. I'm gonna, gonna, only gonna lecture for a maximum of 30 minutes each week. But if you guys wanna do assignments live, uh, I will stay on if you have questions for me, um, but you don't have to be here the whole two hours and 40 minutes. So I'm just gonna lecture on the material, get you guys a good baseline for what's, um, you know, what's the standard for the upcoming week. But like I said, most of this stuff is gonna be done outside on your own time. Um, so you don't have to be here the whole two, two, hundred, two hour, 40 minutes if you don't want to. Uh, that's just a designated block of time that I, I'm allowed to be here or I have to be here if you guys have questions. But if you guys don't have any questions, I'm gonna dip out. So I'm not just gonna stay on here uh, by myself. So yeah. Um, I can't think of anything else to go through for now. So review syllabus, review schedule, review the links that I've posted um, for the assignments next week, um, get your lab manual, um, and be excited about biology. I'm also gonna send a link to my YouTube channel. So yeah. That's it. Um, the YouTube channel will have two different lectures. I lectured last or yesterday. You can watch that one too. It's the same thing pretty much, but just click on your section lecture. Uh, should be open to the public so you can share it around if you wanna share your friends about what you're learning in biology. Any other questions? Do you have an example of an ecosphere we can get? I do not right now, um, but the YouTube, all the links will show you what a little ecosphere looks like. It's pretty much, if you can imagine a pond in a jar, that's your ecosphere. So you can add little fishies if you want. Uh, you can add little crustaceans, little bugs, um, but it's pretty much just gonna be a pond in a jar um, with like dirt and mud and stuff on the bottom, some rocks. Uh, and then, you know, your water and any aquatic plants you have in there. Next week is what I'm really going to get into with the ecosphere setup. Um, so don't, you know, don't read into it too much now. Definitely familiarize yourself with it. But next week, lab two, I'm really going to get into what the ecosphere is. All right. Is he just, yeah, go ahead. Someone has a question that they want to share out loud. Uh, yeah, I have a question. What's up? So are we supposed to set up the ecosphere before the, uh, our class next week? The ecosphere is a semester long project. Oh. So um, read into it. It's not, there's nothing due next week except you're like selfie with your materials. You don't have to fully set it up. Um, I just want you to familiarize yourself with the class and with the projects this upcoming week. Um, so nothing is due for the ecosphere besides that little selfie, um, but that's about it. Okay, thank you. So yeah, you don't have to go out and go to the pond and set up your whole ecosphere right now. Yeah. Is each assignment we are given due the next week on Tuesday? It's gonna be due on Thursday. So this is a Thursday class. It will be due one week, Thursday at 11 is, is the, the assignment due date. Um, I know in, this, in, the, in the schedule, sometimes students are confused by this. So it says like, I don't know if you can see this, week two would be uh, uh, 125 to 128. The assignments will be due on our class date. So it's not due anytime between then, it's due on our class date. Cool. Any other questions? All right, uh, I'll stay on if you have them. If you don't wanna shout them out to everyone, that's fine. But for now you are free to go. You are done with class. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. See you guys next week. Thank you.